For quite a few years now, my wife and I have been giving demonstrations about how early man turned a rock into a tool simply by hitting it with another rock. And invariably the question comes up, how did anybody ever think of this? And how did you learn? Well, a story of how somebody thought of this was passed down generation from generation by oral tradition, and I heard about it from a man called Larry Schreiber, who finally wrote it down. And the story goes like this. A half a million years ago, there was a man named Flint, a handsome man as cavemen go, and famous for his squint. He never shaved or took a bath. His friends all thought him scary. They all behaved along his path. They called him Dirty Harry. One day while jumping from a, a tree, he landed on a rock, which sent blood pumping from his knee above his dirty sock. This punk rock made my day, said Flint, so now I'm going to kill it. He grabbed the guilty piece of stone and struck it with his billet. The first flake cut him to the bone, the second did the same. The more he struck that nasty stone, the sharper it became. So after many blisters, cuts, and multiple contusions, old Harry grimly whispers, Nuts! It's quit or get transfusions! Okay. His fingers thusly eaten up, he felt a bloody fool. The rock that he had beaten up had thus become a tool. So now we know the mystery behind the lithic blade, we owe it to the history that Dirty Harry made. And now the time has come, my friends, to finish up the story, because Flint Eastwood had a friend who should share half the glory. Flint Eastwood's buddy was a hunk, Chert Reynolds was his name, a man of charm and wit to boot and hunting was his game. He always hunted with a club and did quite well, I'll add. But on this day a mastodon had stomped him pretty bad. He dragged himself to Eastwood's cave and asked him for advice. Flint showed him all the points he'd made and packed his foot on ice. If I could only throw these things, said Reynolds with insistence, I'd bring the hairy buggers down and still maintain some distance. So Chert tied points to many shafts to help him in his battle. He made a spear, a knife, and just in case, an addle addle. He would have made some arrows too, they're useful heaven knows, but in the days when Reynolds lived, there weren't any bows. Well, hafting turned the world around as far as hunting meat, and we owe half the credit to our hero's flattened feet. Flint Eastwood gets the credit for inventing lithic craft, but when it comes to handles, Chert Reynolds got the shaft.